Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Cortex Tutorial. Today we will learn how to send commands to the robotic gripper through the Cortex API. So without further ado, let's jump in already directly into the code. So contrary to our usual way, today's example will be fairly short, so I will keep the example from the GitHub repository exactly as is. So as you can see in this example, we're defining a gripper command example class, but this class contains a lot of the elements we're already very familiar with. So we have this constructor, destructor here, an initialization function here, whose purpose is simply to create the connection to the API. So all of this we're already really familiar with and comfortable with. The meat of the example is in this run function over here. So first we're checking if the initialization is done, and then we're proceeding with the example. So to send commands to a gripper, you will need to use a gripper command object from the base service. So you can create this and select which mode of control you want to use on your gripper. So first, we're sending a gripper position command. And for the robotic gripper, we only have one finger. Of course, the robotic gripper actually has two, but those always move in tandem. So we're only sending one type of command. So on that gripper command, we're adding a finger. We're setting the identifier to one to select the one finger on the gripper. And then all we have to do is set the value of the position of that finger to whatever we want. The unit for the position value of the finger is actually a fraction of completely open or completely closed. When the gripper is completely closed, the value you should put here is 1 and completely open is 0. Anything in between will give you a partially open gripper. And then all you have to do is send a base send gripper command using your gripper command object. This here waits for a little while, and in a for loop like this, we're increasing the position so that we're gradually closing the gripper one step at a time. It's also possible to send gripper speed commands. So all you have to do is take your gripper command object and set the control mode to gripper speed. And then you can set the value here for your desired speed. Again, as a value, this time, instead of between 0 and 1, between minus 1 and plus 1. And this here, in gripper speed mode, this value is a fraction of the maximum speed of the gripper. In the case of the robotic gripper I'm using, the maximum speed is 150 millimeter per second. Again, all we have to do to send this command is use the base service client and then send gripper command of our gripper command. If we want to monitor the data from our gripper, we can use a gripper feedback uh, with a gripper class and a gripper request. So now in this while loop here, while we're sending a gripper speed like this, we can create a request to obtain the gripper position. So in this while loop here, while the motion is not complete, we're fetching the position here using the get measured gripper movement function. The request here is for a gripper position and the feedback return from the gripper is stored in the gripper feedback object. So here we're simply verifying if our feedback has the proper size and if the data is valid. And we're checking here if the motion is complete. And that's all we need to know to, as to how to control a gripper. There's still a little more on the example here, but basically all it shows you is that you can send a negative value in case you want to open your gripper instead of closing it. So in this case, we're sending a gripper speed command as well to open it. And we're also sending a gripper request as a gripper speed so that we can monitor the speed at which the gripper is open. The value returned by gripper request for gripper speed is also a uh, fraction of the maximum speed of your gripper. So in this while loop here, while the motion is not complete, what we're doing is we're printing the reported speed from the gri gripper feedback. And that's it for the example. So I've built the example off screen. Now let's see how it looks like on the robot. So first we open the gripper and then we close gradually using this for loop. 
once we're done, we're opening the gripper using a speed command and reporting the position, and then we're closing it again, reporting the speed. And that's it. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching. Don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel to be notified when we release our next tutorial video.